Okay, so the title of this video is slightly misleading, but, uh, but stay with me. Hey all, I'd like to introduce you to the Dream Controller, as I have titled it. At the risk of telling you my entire life story, uh, there is some context here that I think is relevant to understanding the project and what it actually does. So I'm one of those weirdos that actually really loved the Steam Controller. I have mine right here. You can see it has uh, dust on it. I thought it was a really elegant solution to the issue of trying to play games that require a mouse and keyboard while on a couch or somewhere that you could have a controller but you don't have your mouse and keyboard. I've also spent a significant amount of time turning my Nintendo Switch into a jack-of-all-trades device. Uh, as my Switch is soft modded, I frequently stream games from my desktop to my Switch, which essentially turns my Switch into a Steam Deck of sorts as long as I have decent enough Wi-Fi. And that started to propose an issue for games that were not meant to be played with a controller in mind. So with this very niche problem that plagued exactly only me, I set out to bother my friend and former roommate Max with another of my high concept project ideas. To create a Switch controller that had touch pads just like the Steam controller. Originally it seemed like a pipe dream, but someone has actually done something similar. A project by Matteo Pisani, I'll link his write up in the description, who replaced his left Joy-Con analog stick with a capacitive touch pad. So we knew it was possible. Using Mateo's write-up, Max was able to map out the project with one added twist. I wanted the touchpad to also f function as an analog stick so that the controllers could conceivably be used on any Switch, not just my modded one that was streaming games to my Switch. So it had to be dual purpose. It had to act as a USB mouse, which some Switch games actually do support, and also function as an analog stick, even though there is clearly no stick there. With both of these modes, it would fit my dream for a controller that would allow me to play games via remote streaming with a mouse while also being able to play normal Switch games on the same controller since it was important to me that we designed something that could be used on any Switch, not just mine. So what's actually inside of this? Um, this was a Hori Split Pad Pro controller, um, just the default black one that they sell. Uh, inside of it, there is a microcontroller, a digital to analog converter, and a custom printed circuit board that we designed to bridge everything together. For a more technical explanation, as well as to ensure that I don't mangle the specifics, here's Max to explain it um, from his end, since he's the person who actually did all of the heavy lifting on this. Can't stress enough, uh, he took my pie-in-the-sky idea and brought it into reality, mapped out the whole project, showed me how to design the PCB, did all the coding, soldering, and polishing for my extremely strange request. So huge shout out to Max, he is extremely talented at this sort of thing. The heart of this mod is the TNC LC microcontroller. It is responsible for reading the data from the capacitive touch sensor and converting that into both mouse movements and emulated analog stick movement. 
The touch sensor we're using in this case is a Circ Glide Point trackpad. Circ provides code on their GitHub for using these sensors with a Teensy, so the code for this project was fairly trivial to implement since most of the challenging sensor interfacing parts had already been taken care of. The basic information flow within the controller is this. First, touch data is read from the touchpad by the Teensy over SPI. If the Teensy is set to mouse mode, the difference between the position of the current touch reading and the previous touch readings are sent over the Teensy's USB port as mouse movement using the Teensy HID mouse library. If the Teensy is configured to emulate the analog stick, instead the X and Y positions of the touch reading are sent to the DAC. DAC, or DAC, stands for Digital to Analog Converter. It is a type of electronic component that is able to generate analog voltages between zero and a given reference voltage. It can be controlled digitally from a microcontroller, in this case using SPI. The DAC we're using in this project is an MCP4922, which is a 12-bit two-channel DAC, meaning we can set two different analog voltage outputs, each with 4096 possible voltage settings. This is useful because of how analog joysticks work. Traditional joysticks are made up of two different potentiometers, one for up and down and one for left and right. A potentiometer is a type of variable voltage divider, meaning that it will evenly scale down any reference voltage applied to it. For example, if our analog joystick is using a reference voltage of 5 volts and we're not touching it, so the stick is in the middle of its travel, both the X and Y potentiometers will be dividing that voltage in half, so you would read 2.5 volts on both directions. If we move the stick all the way to the left, the resistor ratio in the left to right X potentiometer would change, creating an output voltage of 0 volts. But the ratio of the up and down Y potentiometer would stay the same since we didn't move the stick up or down at all. Now, if we move the stick up a little bit, the relationship in the resistors of the Y potentiometer would change, leading to an increase in the voltage I'd outputs. The microcontroller within the Hori gamepad, the one that shipped with it, not the Teensy that we added, reads these two analog voltages and is able to determine the position of the joystick, which it sends on to the switch. Our hack is that instead of using two potentiometers that are adjusted based on the movement of your thumb, we're using two channels of a digital to analog converter to generate the different voltage levels. Remember, it's all about the voltage here. The resistance within the potentiometers are just how the voltage change is created. When you're not touching the sensor, the TNC emulates the analog stick being in the center. It instructs the DAC to put the voltage for both channels in the middle. The microcontroller in the gamepad sees the voltage of both directions as right in the middle, so it tells the switch that the joystick is in the middle. If you were to touch the sensor a bit to the left, the TNC would instruct the DAC to set the voltage of the X direction lower by a proportional amount. The Hori's microcontroller would see this and tell the switch that the joystick was moved to the left. If you moved your finger up a bit, the TNC would instruct the DAC to adjust the Y direction voltage accordingly. The X voltage would stay the same since you didn't move your finger left or right. Again, the Hori microcontroller would see this and tell the switch about the change. This update occurs many times per second, every time that the sensor reports new touch data, and thus we are able to replace the analog joystick with our digital touch sensor using the DAC to generate the analog voltage that the gamepad is expecting. So with that context and explanation, I want to show you a little bit of how it works in practice. As mentioned, it has two modes, analog stick mode and mouse mode. So it defaults to analog stick mode. As you can see, if I just tap the right part, it emulates flicking left or right. And we can actually go into settings, go down to controllers and sensors. And all the way at the bottom, there should be calibrate motion sticks. So I'm just going to pretend I'm tilting the stick. And you can see, as I'm moving my finger, stick moves as it would be on an analog stick and it snaps back to the middle as an analog stick would as well. Another fun benefit of this is uh, no stick drift as there is no stick to drift. So this works pretty well. Uh, I would probably want to use analog mouse mode for anything that uses the right stick as a camera control rather than anything first person. So I'm going to move it up hat in time and you'll see that for simple things like adjusting the camera it works perfectly fine. It is a little bit strange to get used to not having an actual stick here, um, but once your fingers kind of get used to it, it works pretty well. I will also take this time to mention that um, the clicking in the right stick is mapped to one of these um, paddles on the back that the Hori Split Pad Pro has because the capacitive touchpad sensor I'm using here, clearly I cannot um, 
push it into anything. So here we are in Hatton time. Um, I'm not really used to playing the game on a flat surface like this, but to control the camera, as you can see, it works perfectly fine because we're really not doing a whole lot. A more complicated example here would be something like New Player Throne, where it's a twin stick shooter, but obviously I don't have one of the sticks. So we can go in, and again, I'm not really used to playing on a flat surface. You know, normally I'd want to pick it up like this, but as you can see, you know, it is a little strange to get used to, but it totally does work. Um, you're not quite using an analog stick, but your brain can kind of figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm moving it around as I would an analog stick. It, it almost feels like I'm using a mouse, which is which is pretty interesting. It would probably make these um, these types of games a lot easier. Enter the Gunhead would probably play pretty well in this manner. Another really neat thing about this is that there's actually a couple Switch games that natively support a mouse and keyboard input. Now the only one I have like this is Hypnospace Outlaw, which is a game that is designed to play like a old school computer. And while the Switch port is pretty nice, um, I find that playing it without a mouse kind of takes away from the experience a little bit. So first I'll show you what it looks like normally. So, as you can see, you kind of snap to anything that you're using with the analog stick. I'm, I'm not, you know, moving it around, it just snaps to these items. If we can actually go in, it'll probably yell at me, but... And it, it snaps to any interactable item, which is, which is fine, but I, I don't find it to be particularly immersive. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this USB that is hanging off of the Dream Controller. Um, I have a USB-A to USB-C adapter here. We're going to plug it in. I'm going to hit this turbo button that's going to change modes. And because of the way that the switch recognizes USB devices, I'm just going to unplug it and replug it real quick. And now we have a mouse instead of an analog stick that's snapping to different items which really makes the game feel a little bit more immersive, which I, I really dig a lot. So here we are. We have it working on uh, an actual native Switch game that just normally supports mouse input. Um, so let's, let's get to the other reason that I wanted this, which was remote playing via uh, Moonlight, which is NVIDIA's proprietary streaming software. So I'm going to ask that you all close your eyes for a second while I load up some homebrew on my Switch. Hey, thanks for closing your eyes. Here we are, and I have remoted into my gaming desktop from my Switch. Um, this video is not about how to do this, so if this is something you're interested in, I would recommend Googling Moonlight-NX, which is the homebrew software I'm using. Um, as you can see, I am in Steam Big Picture mode right now, which is what allows me the most freedom in rebinding controls. You're gonna see me hit B to go um, forward because it is mapped like a PS4 controller where the proceed button is on the bottom here. But you can also see I have a mouse right here. Now the software is trying to overlay a mouse on top of that. We can get rid of that real quick by doing this. There we go, we have our little mouse and here's a game that I am very fond of. It's called FTL, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. But unfortunately, it's a game that does not really run very well. I don't think it's portable on any other system. I think it has an iPad port, and that's about it. Because it has really heavy mouse input in order to use it, I'm just not sure it would work with an analog stick. Luckily, we have a mouse right here. So, And I have this all mapped the way I want it, so none of this was done by default. I had to go into Steam, add the game as a non-Steam game, and then... I have the right trigger mapped as left click, and I have uh, B mapped as one and A mapped as two because those are really common inputs you have to use. So I'm gonna pause, because you pause a lot in FTL, and you know we're gonna target the system right here, unpause. You know, the game works as you would expect it to because it is just assuming you have a mouse here, which is really neat. Um, 
I'm not very good at it. I'm playing on a modded version that has a lot more content that makes it harder. So we're not here to talk about my ability to play FTL, but here is one of the main uses of this mouse mode. I am currently playing a computer game on my Switch with a mouse in a portable form factor, albeit a little silly looking, but this is essentially, you know, my take on the Steam Deck. So we can leave. My accuracy isn't the greatest because the camera angle I am playing at. Here's another example. Here is Fallout New Vegas, one of my favorite video games. So this is a little bit of an interesting case because Fallout New Vegas has controller support, but it's very hard to aim because it doesn't really have auto aim. So I'm kind of confusing the game right now. I'm sending it mouse input as well as controller input. So all the other inputs for this game are going to be via the built-in controller input. But as you can see, I am using my mouse to aim, which I find is the best way to do that. Um, I could up the sensitivity a little bit. I was playing on PC, so I had to change those settings. As you can see I'm swiping quite a lot to get anywhere, but um, you know, you can pretty consistently aim. I'm getting shot at, obviously, but you know, this is much better than just having to, like I can turn this back into analog stick mode and it suddenly becomes a lot harder to aim anything because I'm just kind of tapping it on this imaginary analog stick. Back to mouse input mode, much better. So yeah, there you have it. This is the dream controller as I've called it. It is really unique and absolutely perfect for my exact workflow. I hope you guys found it as interesting as I did. I've been playing a lot of games on my couch or in my bed and not at my computer because I sit at my computer all day for work. So it's kind of nice to be able to take this somewhere else. It's rare that my wild project ideas pan out as intended and this one just works so well. Again, major props and all credit to Max who made this a reality and to Matteo Pisani for giving us a baseline to work off of. If you want to build your own, I'm linking Max's GitHub for the project in the description as well. Feel free to comment if you have any questions. This was a labor of love and something I've been really excited about for a really long time, and I'm beyond hyped that I can show it to you guys. All right, have a good one.